following is our experience using the dermal collagen allograft patch for a massive irreparable rotator cuff tear. The history of this patient includes a 65-year-old female, right shoulder pain for one year. After her shoulder was grabbed, she had pain with overhead activity, catching locking, failed 10 months of physical therapy. Her physical examination showed active forward elevation to 145 degrees, external rotation at her side to 30 degrees, and internal rotation to L1 with resistive strength 4 over 5 throughout. Her MRI showed a massive, full-thickness, supra-infraspinatus tear with retraction to the level of the glenoid. X-rays showed a chromiohumeral interval narrowing less than 6 millimeters, with the MRI showing a retracted, supraspinatus full-thickness tear. Sagittal views confirmed the full-thickness, retracted nature and the massive size of the tear. The axial view showed an intact subscapularis tendon. The patient was brought to the operating room and placed in the lateral decubitus position through an antero superior portal. The biceps, which was found to be partially torn, was released. The antero superior, postero superior, and central portion of the glenoid was then debrided, allowing for observation of the denuded glenoid bone. Retracted rotator cuff tear was visualized. Utilizing a 4 5 shaver, the superior glenoid rim was debrided and then measured at approximately 15 to 20 millimeters. The arthroscope was then placed posterior superiorly where the distance between the glenoid and the greater tuberosity footprint was measured. The first anchor was then placed along the antero superior aspect of the glenoid. This was a three millimeter anchor single loaded with a non-absorbable suture. Second anchor was similar, similarly placed at the 11 o'clock position and brought out through the antero superior portal. Utilizing a cannula, the first greater tuberosity footprint anchor was delivered at the margin of the articular surface and the greater tuberosity. This was followed by placement of a single loaded heavy threaded suture and anchor. Careful attention was paid towards removing the fibrous surface along the graded tuberosity footprint to allow for proper bleeding. A second anchor was then delivered posteriorly, and the sutures were brought out through a cannula. Careful attention was paid to allow for the sutures not to overlap or intertwine with one another. A three millimeter thickened dermal allograft was then prepared based on the anterior to posterior distance and the medial lateral distance, and five millimeters were added to each side. The graft was then properly shaped, and four piercing holes were placed along what would be the immediately placed portion of the graft. Each of the Sutures were passed through the four holes respectively, and this was followed by placement of two holes at the appropriate length from the medial to lateral distance for grasping of the heavier suture limbs. The three millimeter dermal allograft was then gently seesawed into the subacromial space utilizing the double pulley technique of the four sutures that had been placed. The two immediately placed sutures from opposite limbs had been tied externally to allow for the seesaw capture. 
Once the graft was brought into place over the glenoid, the sutures were then tied down with interrupted five half hitches with alternating suture posts. Once the graft is secured medially, the lateral row is then prepared. A punch is taken to the lateral row of the greater tuberosity, and the sutures are loaded up from the medial row into the lateral row anchor, which is then brought down. A transosseous equivalent is created by taking one of the heavy sutures from the anterior anchor and one from the posterior anchor. These are then secured with the biocomposite 4.75 knotless anchor. This is repeated on the more posteriorly placed anchor laterally. Again, taking one of the sutures from the anterior anchor, one from the posterior anchor, and creating a crisscross effect. Viewing posterior laterally, the graft is seen and then attached to the remnant of the rotator cuff tendon with interrupted sutures, utilizing a suture type device to pass the sutures through the graft. Postoperatively, the patient is maintained in the sling for six weeks, followed by passive range of motion starting at week one. Assistive active range of motion at week eight with PREs commencing at four months post-op. Postoperative MRI in this patient at approximately 12 months showed reconstitution of the superior capsule and tendon with restoration of the chromiohumeral interval greater than six millimeters. Sagittal and coronal views confirmed the restoration of the roof of the rotator cuff as well as the axial views showing the absent biceps tendon from the bicipital tenotomy with intact subscap tendon. Thank you.